If you were to ask developers whether an application created with Ionic was native, the most common answer you get would almost certainly be no. So in this video, what we're going to do is create a native application with Xcode and Swift, and we're going to use Ionic to help build that application. The purpose of this video is to make a case for why I think the native versus non-native terminology doesn't really make much sense when it comes to talking about whether an Ionic application is native or not. Now there are differences between an application that uses a web view like Ionic and other approaches, but I don't think that the native versus non-native terminology captures that. And I think it also adds to a lot of confusion as well. So what we're going to do right now is open up Xcode, create a new native iOS project, and we're kind of gonna make our own little mini version of Capacitor and run an Ionic app inside of that, just coding it from scratch with Xcode. So what we're going to do first is just bring up Xcode and we'll create a new project. You can follow along if you want, but this isn't actually something I'd recommend you do. You should just use Capacitor if you want to run an Ionic application natively. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to demonstrate a point here. So we're just using normal native tech right now. So what we're gonna do is just create a single view app. Uh, we'll just call this uh, whatever we like. We'll just call this a uh, Ionic example. And uh, we'll just keep the defaults of uh, Swift and Storyboard uh, here. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're using Storyboard or not. So we'll click Next to create that project. Okay, so we've got the uh, Xcode project up and running now. Uh, we can, for example, jump into the main Storyboard here. And the basic idea uh, behind running an Ionic application as a native app is to put a web view in the native app and then load your Ionic app inside of that. And then that web view essentially serves as the user interface for your application. So you still have access to all the native stuff outside of the web view. You will just need to communicate between the web view and the rest of the native app to uh, use those things. And that's exactly why you should use Capacitor for this kind of thing and not just do it yourself because Capacitor makes all of that very easy. Again, this is purely just to demonstrate a very sort of basic uh, example of what Capacitor is doing in that we are just using normal native iOS projects. Okay, so we have our storyboard here and we could, for example, open up the uh, library here and we could search among all the other native controls and find the WK web view. And we could drop that into the storyboard and hook that up to our view controller, but we aren't going to take that approach. We're just gonna code it directly in our view controller for this example. Uh, one thing we will need to do before uh, using the WebKit view is to add it to the uh, build phases section uh, in our general project information here. So we just need to come into build phases, then link binary with libraries, add the plus button, and type WK, or web, I guess brings that up, webkit.framework. So you just wanna add that to your project so that you can use uh, WK web view. And I want to reiterate one more time, if you are following along, this is purely for education purposes. Don't actually uh, use this, well, in most cases. Just use Capacitor. All right, so with that set up, we're going to jump into viewcontroller.swift, which is controlling our main uh, storyboard view there. So in order to use WebKit, we're going to just have to import WebKit at the top. And what I'm going to do next is just copy and paste in some stuff I mostly stole from the Capacitor source code. It's just um, configuring some basics for the uh, web view. Okay, so what we're doing here is just importing WebKit and then we are setting up a reference for our web view here. And then we've uh, used this override function here to just set up some uh, configurations for the web view. Not super relevant to this example, but uh, this is basically what Capacitor is doing as well, at least partly. You can see here we're setting the, the bounces uh, option to false there. Uh, this configuration is important. Uh, when we load a file into the web view, it will allow that file to uh, then load other files like the JavaScript files we'll need. Uh, but again, this isn't super relevant to what we're doing. Uh, this is just the basic setup for the web view. And then we're just assigning that web view to uh, the view itself. So it's just gonna take up the full uh, screen for us. So now that we have a web view available, we're going to need to make use of that web view. And so what we want to do is just load up an Ionic app into that web view. So what I'm gonna do is basically just drop a built Ionic app into the assets for the Xcode project here. So I'll just bring that up now. So I've just got a, basically it's a default Ionic 
application and I've got the built output here in the www folder. Uh, so I can actually just drag that on over, drop that in there, tick copy items if needed, create folder references, make sure we're adding it to our project properly here and hit finish. And then that should uh, pop up down uh, here so we can see all of our built Ionic files there, with a bunch of JavaScript files and the index file as well is just there. And we will actually need to make a small change to this file uh, so that these JavaScript files load correctly. We need to change this base href to dot slash. Again, this is just purely for this example with capacitor. You don't need to worry about this kind of thing. So I'll make sure to save that. So now if we head back into our view controller again, now we just need to load that uh, those web assets into our web view. So we're going to do that inside of the view did load method here. So once again, I'll just paste that in and then we'll talk through it. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're setting a path here to our index.html file using bundle.main.path. So we're looking for that inside of the www directory here. And then we're creating a URL from that path and then we create a URL request. And then we just call webview.load and we load that request that we have created. So basically that's just going to uh, launch that index.html file in the web view and then any of the JavaScript files that that index.html file loads uh, will be able to be loaded in and run the application. So let's actually try running this now and see that it all works. So I'm just going to hit the play button for this uh, simulator here and there we go as you can see we have the ionic application running in the simulator now. So this is a standard native iOS project We've just added a web view to it and then loaded our, our Ionic application into that web view. So in my view, the application that I'm working on here is native. I don't think it would make much sense to say that this isn't native. It's a native project. It can be built natively. It can be uh, added to app stores and uh, do all the things that native apps can do. We could even uh, go onto our storyboard or uh, manually add other native uh, view controls. We could add uh, things to view um, AR kit, we could add uh, popover things like toasts, we could add whatever controls we wanted to this if we wanted to. Now I'm not trying to claim that this doesn't make any difference. There is a difference between using a web view to display the UI for your application and using the normal native controls. That does have its own benefits and drawbacks and limitations, but I don't think using a web view makes it not native. I think a better description would be that an Ionic application uses a non-native UI or that Ionic applications don't use native user interface controls. But I don't think it makes sense to say that this application isn't native entirely. So in the grand scheme of things, this might seem like a pretty pointless uh, debate or topic to talk about. And I think a lot of the times it is, a lot of the time it is just people getting a bit personal over what they're using but I do think that this does create genuine confusion for people, especially if they're trying to figure out if they can use Ionic to submit apps to the App Store, for example. And the answer is, well, yes, absolutely. You're building a normal native app and you can submit it to the App Store. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below, whether you agree with me or disagree with me. I think this is one of those sort of hot topics that has a tendency to turn into you know, flame wars and things like that. Uh, that isn't my intent with this video. I just genuinely think that uh, the terminology here isn't particularly good and maybe we could have a discussion about that. I don't think I'll achieve much particularly by doing this, but it is also a bit of fun just to jump in and play around with some Swift code, uh, work with Xcode a bit, get familiar with all this stuff. So uh, hopefully this has been a bit educational for you as well. Okay, so if you did like this video, do feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.